I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States, and to that republic for which those gorgeous red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under our only God, Yahweh, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Yes, that Pledge of Allegiance never used to have under God in it. It was without it. President Eisenhower put under God in it. But which God? Do we pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth? We know it's more than that. We know that it's, it's, we love our nation. We appreciate our nation. But who blessed us with this nation? Who blessed us to breathe, to have eyes to behold this beautiful nation? Who blessed us with ears to hear? Who? This is why we pledge allegiance to our one God, Yahweh, who's blessed this nation. Why? Because she's been a blessing and a friend to Israel. And Yahweh promised that he would bless anyone who blessed Abraham's seed. And we know that Abraham would be the father of many nations. And know this. The 13 colonies were established by Israeli people who believed the word of Almighty Yahweh. How do you know that? Well, the second governor for the state of Massachusetts, whose name was William Bradford, it was against the law in the state of Massachusetts to celebrate Christmas. <gasps> Why? Well, because Jeremiah chapter 10 says not to learn the way of the heathen. In fact, people could be fined and or imprisoned for having a Christmas tree because that was a pagan practice, not endorsed by William Bradford. In fact, he's buried in one of the oldest cemeteries in the state of Massachusetts, and on his tombstone is that yud heh wah -Hey, the name of our God, Yahweh. In fact, I believe it says Yahweh is good in Hebrew. Yahweh is something tov. I forget what goes in the middle there. But this is true. These things are not hard to find. So I want to talk about some things today about our rock. Who was the rock in the wilderness? Well, a lot of you might say it might be a J name or it might be a Shua name of some kind. But that's not what the scripture says. How do you know that? Well, let me lay a little bit of a foundation before we get into the rock verses. Everywhere you see in your King James Version, Lord written in all uppercase letters, and God written in all uppercase letters, and the error of Jehovah seven times is where the name of Yahweh has been removed. Who had the right to do that? The enemies of Israel, who did not love Israel's God, who thought it was all right to worship the God of your choice. And we know who ruled the world at one time. We know that Rome ruled the world at one time. The Greeks ruled the world at one time. But Israel never changed their God. They worshiped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose only name is Yahweh. So when I read these verses in your KJV or in the, um, now in the complete Jewish Bible, they use uppercase Adonai. In the Hasidic versions, they will use uppercase Hashem, meaning the name. Uppercase Adonai, meaning master, or the equivalent of uppercase L-O-R-D. So with this being said, I'd like to reiterate Psalm 33 and 12. How blessed, this is the complete Jewish Bible. I will not use uppercase Adonai, I will use his name where it rightfully belongs. 
How blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people he chose as his heritage. Now we know that he chose Israel, the nation of Israel, but that does not mean that Israel has dibs on the Almighty. Is he not the creator of all? Yes, he is. Is it not written in his word that unto every man, or for us women, is given the measure of faith? Yes. Now, I, um, I address this nation as a woman. I'm sharing with you the things that needs to be told to a nation that has been in bondage for decades and to three foreign entities. So back to Psalm 33 and 12. KJV reads, Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh. There's that uppercase L-O-R-D. And the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. So Yahweh blesses a nation. Now we know that this nation has been predominantly what they want to call Christian. Please know that they were never called Christians at Antioch. (gasps) Listen to that woman. Yeah, well, don't listen to me. Do your own research. I'm going to tell you, like the behind the scenes news people that knows what's really going on in this nation and around the world. I'm going to encourage you, like they tell us, do your own research. These things are not hard to find. So while we're waiting on the revealing of uh, things being made manifest, uh, who has stolen our elections and who has... um, uh, been guilty of multi-billionaire, uh, uh, billion dollar uh, pedophilia, child trafficking, human trafficking of every kind, and witchcraft in its highest art. We not only take back our nation, we take back the name of our God that's been removed from the King James Version By the way, you need to do a study on King James. He wasn't such a very nice man. Whoever is responsible for removing his name, Yahweh, from his word, will stand in judgment. Now, you might be worshiping a J name or a Shua name or some other kind of name. I don't know. You know. What if you've been taught wrong? That doesn't mean that you don't have an experience in the Holy Spirit because he's given unto every man or woman the measure of faith. Even an atheist. Why do you think Romans is so plain in saying because they did not want to retain God in their knowledge that our God, Yahweh, turned them over to reprobate? Why do you think that laws were being made one time in California that they were going to um, address the Bible as a weapon? And it was, uh, they tried to pull this law in the state of California. I don't know if they ever succeeded. They could have, as corrupt as it's been. But if you stop and think, if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, When a person uh, who is committing evil, wicked sin, yet they've been given a measure of faith, don't you know when they hear the truth taught that it's a sin, a sin to this or that, and they're committing this sin, this transgression? Don't you know that that measure of faith brings a conviction and it makes them feel bad. Makes them feel bad. And oh, the God of this world, that demonic force of hell, doesn't want to lose their assets. They don't want to lose their perversion. So they got to think of something to stop the teaching of the truth. So they create this stupid law. Yeah, the stupid law 
that the Bible is a weapon. Well, it probably is. It's a two-edged sword. It surely is. And it cuts deep. And some people who are so tormented because they know what's right, but they're bound. They're bound. Hey, you can receive deliverance, but you need to be crying out to the right one. Now, Almighty Yahweh has winked at all of our ignorance over the years when we thought that our God's name was a J name or a Shua name. But I want to get into some rock verses that will probably clear up who that rock was that followed them in the wilderness. Remember, Psalm 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh. And then we have that first commandment. That first commandment don't say Yahweh. Oh, you're probably, you're right. It don't. They messed up, didn't they? Big time. They got the first commandment is you shall have no other gods before me. Who is the me? Who is the me? You got to go to the previous verse. <laughs> his name was substituted with Adonai and Lord. So I'm going to put his name back where it belongs. Let's go to Deuteronomy 5 and 6. And I'll read Deuteronomy 5 and 6 and then 7 together. KJV, I am Yahweh, not uppercase Lord. I am Yahweh, your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall have none other gods before me. That's the first commandment. That's how we know that our, what our God's name was. Because, well, how would you know what, his God, what your God's name is if it's been replaced with titles? Then we got the complete Jewish Bible. It reads, I am Yahweh, not Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt where you lived as slaves. You shall have no other gods before me. So to name any other name other than this as your God and Savior, you've missed it. You've missed it. And if you didn't know, you just didn't know. So I share with you so that you will go and know and study and study. All right, let's talk about this rock. The rock in the wilderness. You know, a lot of people, they don't read the first blood covenant. And um, how are you going to know who your Savior is without knowing the first blood covenant? I'm just asking. How are you going to know? Well, I've known the J name or I've known the Shua name all my life. Well, somebody missed the boat. Somebody didn't do study in themselves. Well, that's Israel's God. That's what they call him. No, that's the only name he ever had. He has many attributes, but the word name is in the singular tense from cover to cover. So let's talk about the rock. Let's go to the new blood covenant first. Let's put the cart before the horse. <laughs> let's do that so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, let's get over here to it. We're going to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Where are you at? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. It says, All our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Mashiach. That rock was Messiah. Again, there was a rock that followed them in the wilderness. 
Now, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Let's read it one more time. I'm reading from your KJV. All our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same, excuse me, and all did eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Mashiach. Now, first thing y'all are going to say, well, see there, that's talking about Jay, or that's talking about uh, Shua. Well, that's not what Deuteronomy says. Deuteronomy doesn't say that. Let's go to Deuteronomy. There's several rock verses. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 3. I'm going to read from um, the KJV. This again is Deuteronomy 32, verse 3. It says, Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe you greatness unto our God. Verse 4 says, He is the rock. Who's the rock? That previous verse, again, Deuteronomy 32 and 3 says, Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe you greatness unto our God, or Eloheinu. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. The complete Jewish Bible reads of this rock that followed them in the wilderness. It says, for I will proclaim. There's a, that's an articulation word, isn't it? I will speak. I will speak his name. I will proclaim the name of Yahweh. Come, declare the greatness of our God. The rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are just, a trustworthy God who does no wrong. He is righteous and straight. All right, now we go to, let's go to Deuteronomy um, 32 and 18. The complete Jewish Bible reads, You ignored the rock who fathered you. You forgot God who gave you birth. Notice. It interchanges rock with our God. And our only God's name is Yahweh. Not Shua and not a J name. This is very plain. KJV reads in uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 18. Of the rock that begot you, you are unmindful and have forgotten God that formed you. Who is God? Who's the God that formed us? Why do we say hallelujah? Hallelujah means praise, and Yah is the short poetic form of Yahweh, found in Psalm 68 and 4. So who is God? And we know he's God because of what the first commandment says. I heard, I have to say this. I laughed when I heard this. There was a very, uh, he's a respectful man. And he knows a lot of truth in the natural or what's really going on behind the scenes. And he made the statement that the Ten Commandments were not uh, commandments. They, he pretty much said that they were kind of your choice if you want to obey them or not. And I laughed and I thought, oh my word, where do people get your blessing from? He winks at our ignorance. And trust me, we've all walked in ignorance. All of us. And there's not one person above another. I haven't arrived yet. And just because I know 
that my God and Savior and Messiah is only Yahweh? Just because I know that Yahweh is the first and the last does not mean that I have arrived because there's a lifestyle that you got to live. There's a strict, straight, narrow path, not a broad way, that we are to live. And it's strict and holy. Holy means set apart. It's dedication, consecration to the one that gave us breath. Do you think that um, he's going to allow uncleanness to enter his kingdom of any kind? You know uh, that adultery was um, punishable even by death. But let's put it a little bit different in the New Blood Covenant. The New Blood Covenant says that for a man to even look upon a woman to lust, it's as if he's already committed the act. So in order to stop transgression, it starts, it comes through the eye gate and the ear gate. Whatever you give your ears to, whatever you give your eyes to, that creates a library in your mind that could develop filth, uncleanness, unrighteousness, and even create what I call potty mouth, whereby you probably need a roll of tissue paper to wipe it and then a fire hose to wash it out. Because... No corrupt communication is supposed to proceed out of our mouth, right? Oh, but I got the Holy Spirit. Well, um, the Holy Spirit is set apart. Who are you to judge me? Well, the word says that I'm going to know a tree by its fruit. And if the fruit is bad, I'm going to know the fruit is bad. Now, to judge whether a person's going to heaven or hell, I can't say that because that would make me a judge. I listened to all these funerals people go to. I don't know how I got off on this. But I go to these funerals and I say, oh, I hear them say they're all in a better place. How do you know? As righteous and strict as I know my husband lived, I can say I believe he made his robe white and I believe that he's in a better place. But for me to make the statement, he's in a better place, that would make me a judge. I don't know. I don't know. I hope he's in a better place. I believe he's in a better place. But for people to make a blatant statement to say, well, they're in a better place, nobody knows that makes us a judge of heaven or hell. But while the tree is alive, I can identify a tree by its fruit. I identify a tree by the leaves. I identify a tree by its bark, but especially the fruit it bears. And if it bears rotten fruit, I know that that tree is sickly within. Within. Its roots are not getting the proper nutrients. The roots of a tree are being fed with the wrong thing. And one of the main things that feeds our children the wrong thing, as well as adults the wrong thing, is the hell-a-vision, also known as tell-a-vision, to program the mind into a slave mentality. So back to the rock. Back to the rock. The rock in the wilderness. Our Ten Commandments confirm who that God is. And we just read that. Now, I want you to consider something. If that rock in the wilderness was named Yahweh, then that same rock that's named in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 4, did not change. 
That's the same rock, Yahweh. And that same rock is Mashiach. Yeah, that same rock is Messiah. That same rock is the one talked about in Isaiah 44 and 6 that states that Yahweh is the king of Israel and his redeemer, Yahweh of hosts. I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God. Zechariah chapter 14 verses 1 through 9 but especially verses 1 through 5 states that Yahweh's feet are going to return to Mount Olives. That uppercase L-O-R-D, did Zechariah lie? Zechariah knew whose feet were going to return before that uh, lion new blood covenant came along. Who changed his name to a J name or a Shua name from the rock that followed them in the wilderness? And that rock was Messiah. Who had the right to do that? I'll tell you who did it. The ones who ruled the world. They hated Israel and they hated Israel's God. And what's even worse is there is a system in Israel that won't say his name when his word plainly says to use the word proclaim his name, to say his name, to speak his name. Is it any wonder that if his name has been removed from his, from his word that we could use the God of our choice? Yes, we've been given a free will. Almighty Yahweh does not want robot service. He wants a circumcised heart of tenderness to serve Him. And with the way things are all over the world now, and what's happening in so many countries, people standing up for their rights because they don't want a bioweapon put in their system. And we see some on their knees, praying. But who are they praying to? I pray Yahweh Almighty, open the eyes of the people of the world to know that His name, Yahweh, has been removed from His Word. We all say, Hallelujah! Why? Why? Hallelujah in Hebrew means praise. Yah is the short form of Yahweh. It's the short poetic form of Yahweh found in Psalm 68, 4, and it's in a couple other places too. I believe that, uh, where the word says Yah, Yahweh. Of course, KJV used the mistransliteration of Jehovah. But it was Yah to start with. Hallelujah! Ever notice how the presence of the Holy Spirit saturates a place, a congregation, or or assembly when they get lost in the praise of the Spirit. Are you saying I don't have nothing because I call on Shu or Jay? No, I'm not. I would be a fool to say that because I know the Word says unto every man or for us women has been given the measure of faith. But what do we do with the measure of faith? Well, the King James Version can't be wrong. Well, I'm sorry. It it removed his name, Yahweh, from his word. And that new blood covenant states, Great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifest in flesh. Who's God? Which God? The only God that there is. Yahweh Almighty. We've inherited lies. Just like we've inherited lion, demonic forces of hell that have ruled our nation for... for those presidencies from the Bush, Clinton, and Obama administration. These pedophilia, lying murderers. Look, they're humans too. And I hope they repented before they died. You know, Yah was not willing that any should perish. None. He does not rejoice in the death of a transgressor. Until next time, may Yahweh richly encourage you folks to search this out. You'll find I'm telling the truth. Shalom.